The art director of the Owl House just recently uploaded HD versions of the murals we saw in For the Future all over the collector's hallway. This second page of images were much more difficult to decipher, but I have come up with a reasonable explanation for what they represent. A prop designer for the Owl House also released the hidden second page of the collector's storytime book that initially gave us a background into the collectors as celestial beings, but now it reveals so much more about the leader of their kind. The first image in these murals is a shooting star heading towards the sun. We can see the sun it's heading towards in the bottom right hand corner. This shooting star acts as a catalyst to begin the chain reaction sequence of a collector's birth. As this star moves towards the sun, we get a zoomed out shot here of other falling stars and amongst them is the moon, which is also moving. We can tell the moon is moving because just like the other shooting stars around it, it has its own blue streak of motion. This moon is moving into its rightful place for the creation of a collector. The sun gets hit by one of the shooting stars and we can see this become part of it right here. The sun and the moon are the key to making the collectors. They are essentially the sentient celestial parents of collectors and are the only beings in the murals that seem alive. That is why our collector possesses the traits of red pupils and yellow eyes just like his parents. What Kiki Morris said about our collector being a child of the stars makes a lot more sense now. He and the other collectors are literally children of the stars because the creation of them involves falling stars and the sun which is also a star. This mural shows a zoomed out version of the moment of impact between the shooting star and the sun. As the sun is struck by the star, the moon aligns into place right next to it. An important factor for the birth of a collector is the alignment of planets like we see right here. If a collector's birth only required the alignment of the moon and the sun, then there would be far more collectors than we saw on the murals. The reason why I think a collector's birth is so rare is because as well as the sun and moon's alignment, all planets must also align, and this type of scenario is extremely rare. We have seen a lot of collector imagery that suggests they have links with eclipses. I mean, when our collector is found by Philip, he projects the total eclipse cycle around him. Our collector's face is also half sun and half moon with his clothes and necklace sharing a similar design. Collectors are a creation of eclipses but not just that, it has to be eclipses where the planets are fully aligned. This purple sleeping face we see shooting down from the sky is the collector finally being born. Apart from the moon and sun, this purple object is the only other galactic being with a face, and the fact that it is sleeping makes it look childlike, as if it was just born. I believe this collector is ours, because of the purple colour of our collector in the other murals, and the fact that our collector created this castle and the paintings in it, he would probably show his own birth. Although it is also possible that collectors are purple when they are younger and grow into a more blue colour when they are older, so this story could just be how a collector is born and not ours specifically. These murals also tie in with the newly released hidden second page of the collector's book. In this book, it is revealed that there is an eclipse queen. This Eclipse Queen is most likely the leader of these interdimensional beings that are the Collectors. The word Queen is used to describe a powerful female ruler, and it would only make sense given the fact that Collectors are born from Eclipses, and the word Eclipse is a galactic term, that this Queen is the leader and possibly the mother of all Collectors. This explains the draining spell that Belos uses on the Day of Unity. Our Collector was the one who actually told Belos about this spell and how to cast it, and what does the spell involve? An eclipse. That seems like no coincidence to me. The Eclipse Queen most likely taught our collector this spell, and it will be interesting to see if she makes an appearance in the final episode. Comment down below what you guys think, and make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to never miss one of my videos. Thanks for watching, guys.